terms of module one, we also look at various separation techniques. Um, the main ones are things such as filtration, evaporation, and chromatography, but it's not as common. Um, and these are pretty much physical methods of separation, and they rely on the differences of physical properties. Um, in terms of what filtration is, filtration is pretty much where you have a mixture being passed through a filter and whatever comes out of um, like whatever passes through pretty much is called the filtrate and the remainder is called a residue. So this relies on either solubility or your particle size because there is two types of separate filtration, sorry. Um, Filtration can also be something like sieving. So that's when you have like, let's say a bunch of rocks of different sizes and you sieve it through. And what happens is that smaller rocks go to the bottom, bigger rocks stay at the top. Um, and in terms of solubility, you may have something that is insoluble. So let's say something like um, lead chloride and it's in water and you have to separate the lead chloride from the water. You would then use filter paper, pour the mixture and what will happen is that the lead chloride will be at the top of the filter paper and the water will just pass through. Evaporation has two different types. Um, like it kind of branches off pretty much. You have crit crystallization and distillation. Um, crystallization is pretty much where you have a mixture being heated up and it cools down. Um, and when the solution cools down the liquid pretty much evaporates and you have crystals being formed and you can see um different kinds of crystals that are formed like so for example um magnesium sulfate forms crystals um and sodium chloride forms crystals as well it's really cool um and then you also have distillation distillation is where you have two liquids and you separate them according to boiling point so Let's say I have, um, it's a hard one. Um, let's say I have water and then probably maybe um, another solution. So for example, I'm just trying to think of a solution that we may use. Um, something like hydrochloric acid. Um, in that case, it's likely that the water might may have a higher boiling point, so therefore that will um, evaporate later. So that's how you kind of separate it in terms of distillation. You also have other techniques called decanting and centrifuging. Centrifugation, sorry. Um, decanting pretty much relies on gravity. So that's where you have, um, you know, the density being involved. That's a physical property. Um, and pretty much the lighter liquid, that has a lower density floats at the top, the heavier liquid, the more dense liquid is at the bottom, and you just pour the lighter liquid out first, and then you've separated the two layers. Centrifugation is where you have centrifugal force being used, and you separate components according to um, either their size, shape, or density. So um, it depends. For example, blood can also be centrifuged. So what happens is that when you um, put blood in a centrifuge and it spins, um, you can separate the blood according to the plasma, the white blood cells, the red blood cells, things like that. Um, I don't know how, I don't know the density of those, but that's how you kind of separate blood when you need something like plasma. Um, and these are pretty much the setups of um, each technique. So this one's filtration. Like I said, you have filter paper and you can use a funnel and Filtrate is being collected here. This is evaporation. Um, evaporation is pretty straightforward. I'm sure we've all seen it. Um, you just use a Bunsen burner or a heating mat, whatever you want to use. Um, not a heating mat, sorry, a heating, uh, not a heating plate, a hot plate. Um, or you can also distill things. So like I said, that's through um, boiling point and you use something called a condenser. And you have water being used as well because water helps to cool down the condenser as well as the liquid is passing through. And this is also what a centrifuge looks like.